Hey everyone, welcome to the second half of the Neutrona Wand build video. This guy. If you haven't already seen part one, check that out. Also, check out the videos on how to make the pack and the frame. I think we left off the video waiting for the molds to cure, so why don't we go check that out, see how they turned out. So get up in the morning and check out your molds. Cut off any excess sticking out from the mold frame, loosen the mold, and pop it out. Maybe not so much a pop as a slow, hard push. Pull out the wax and you've got a mold, or three molds in this case. The next question is, what do you fill them with? I pulled out some mod melts, which are basically like super fancy pants glue sticks. They worked reasonably well in the shallower mold, but in the deeper molds, I just couldn't get it to work without getting air bubbles trapped inside. I found what worked best for the other molds was just some five minute two part epoxy I got from the dollar store. I mixed it with a tiny bit of food coloring, warmed it with a heat gun for a couple of seconds to make it more runny and get rid of some of the bubbles, and then poured it into my molds. In a couple of hours, the epoxy was fully cured and it gave me some really nice looking lights. The shorter ones you see here are the same light mold, but just filled half full. It also gave me a pretty good front knob too. It did need a bit of filing because the mold wasn't perfect, but it wasn't too bad. I drilled a hole in the back of the front knob and glued a stick in there. That way the knob will be able to stick out a little ways from the gun body, which is what knobs generally like to do. I also attached a stick to this other side knob to help me paint it a little easier. Now I'm guessing there's probably some people who don't really feel like lathing their candles and casting their own knobs. So I'll include the measurements in the pattern and you can either make them out of foam or find bits and pieces around the house. In in fact, that's what I did to make the hat knob. I found a tiny tube of body glitter at the thrift store, glittered my body up, and stole the cap. I then super glued the cap onto piece 96, and I had a hat knob. I also made one other type of light, which was just me punching two 9mm discs from the bottom of a plastic container and super gluing them together. After all was said and done, here's all the knobs and lights I ended up using. Okay, now let's make the little box that goes on the side of the barrel. I call it the barrel box. Cut two piece 98s from 6mm foam, punch two holes, big enough for the body of your push switch to go through, and glue the two pieces together. Push the switch into place, glue it from the back, and then cut off those wires. Snip, punch a hole for your push switch in the barrel box cover, and punch a hole corresponding to whatever size of light you have as well. Slide the cover over the push switch and glue the top surface down. Score along the edge, fold it over, glue it down, score the next edge, and glue that down. Trim off any excess, and sand it with coarse sandpaper wrapped around a pipe to try and get it to match the curve of the barrel. Hold it in place at the end of the handle against the barrel and mark a line so you know where to stop gluing. Then you can super glue it up and stick it in place. Next we've got what I like to call the barrel tab. It's piece 100. Two of them get glued together back to back with the barrel tab cover piece 101 covering the barrel tab. Make sure to score it as you come to each corner and glue it step by step around the barrel tab. Trim off any extra from the cover, apply some super glue, and glue it to the barrel on the opposite side from the barrel tab. Now find a set of Venetian blinds that your wife won't notice if you remove the handle thing. Yoink. Cut off two pieces, approximately 10 millimeters each, and replace the rod to avoid suspicion. File the ends nice and flat, grab some copper tape, and wrap up those hexagons. Alternatively, you could just paint it with some copper paint. Trim the copper tape off flush with the top and bottom. One gets glued on the right hand side of the instrument bar and one in the center of the rear cylinder. Now glue bottom slab A into place flush with the bottom of the gun box. Just remember if you want fancy lights in there you probably want to have installed them already. Glue bottom slab part B in the other little section and clean up the mess you made. If you don't have a piece of flexible pipe that's green, you can make one with paint. The cable I'm using here is an old VGA cable. Drill some holes in the middle of your Venetian blind hose connector thingies and glue in your green painted cable. The cable glues right into the foam so that'll help keep the connectors from accidentally getting knocked off. Finish up with a tiny bit of copper paint to cover up that top edge. Okay, the clear barrel tube is the hardest thing to find. I ended up getting this one off Amazon, but that's in Canada and I can't see the same one in the US. The main thing is to find one with an outside diameter of three quarters of an inch. I did find some acrylic tubes online that were the right dimensions and a reasonable price. You're gonna end up with six feet of tube for the same price I paid for 12 inches. The one I used was five eighths inside diameter, but it would be more accurate with a thicker wall. So I'd go for the one with the half inch inside diameter. It's gonna stick inside this three quarter inch PVC conduit, which actually has an inside diameter larger than three quarters of an inch. 
Hmm. Cut a piece that's 81 millimeters long. If you used a tubing cutter, you'll want to get rid of that extra ridge on the end. You can do that by warming it up with a heat gun until it disappears. Draw two parallel lines down the length of the tube about one and a half millimeters apart and cut the tube along those two lines. Use a file to bevel one of the edges to make it easier to squeeze into the end of the barrel. We'll call this piece the mini barrel. If you're lucky, the clear tube should now slide into the mini barrel with just a little bit of resistance. Cut a 15 millimeter ring of the three quarter inch PVC. Cut a two millimeter meter wide slot in that, heat it up until it's flexible, and then hold it tight around the acrylic tube until it cools. Apply some super glue to the end of the acrylic pipe and slide the ring on so it glues into place. Now give it a test and make sure it fits in the barrel. Then pull it out again. Slide your mini barrel over the acrylic tube and make a mark 90 millimeters from the end of the mini barrel. Cut your acrylic tube at that mark. File the end so it's nice and level, then file a bevel all the way around the end of the tube. I'm not sure why, but that's how it is in the movies. Measuring from the front edge of the acrylic tube, mark it at 26, 40, 49, and 66 millimeters. Wrap a rectangular piece of paper around the tube, lining up the ends, to act as a guide for making nice straight lines. Now using the lines you marked and your paper line keeping straight tool, you can start taping off areas of the acrylic tube that we need to protect. The line keeping straight tool only works for one side of the marks, so you'll have to undo it and flip it around. Now you can tape the other edge of the marks. When you're all done taping, it should look Kinda like this. Now you can grab your favorite green scrubby and create some nicely frosted rings around the acrylic. Just watch that you don't scrub too hard and rub away the tape that's protecting the edges. Now for the fun part, taking the tape off to reveal your masterpiece. Clean off the marker with your thumb, cut a chunk of 1 inch PVC 25 millimeters wide or even a little wider, and then cut it in half. Take the pieces outside, heat them up till they get soft, and then squish them flat with another board. Now you can trace the barrel trigger piece 102 onto one of those flat pieces of PVC. Cut it out with your jeweler's saw, file it smooth, and super glue that piece onto the other flat piece. Now you can follow along the edges of the first piece to cut the second piece out. Use a file and sandpaper to smooth down all the edges until it looks perfect. Cut a 7mm ring of 3 quarter inch conduit that's going to go around the acrylic tube and hold the barrel trigger in place. So start by cutting a gap as wide as the barrel trigger in the ring. Heat up the ring until it's soft and then form it around the acrylic tube. Recut that gap so the barrel trigger will fit between the two sides of the ring. This takes a bit of patience because you want the ring to fit tightly around the acrylic tube but also tightly against the sides of the barrel trigger. So take your time and you can always try again if you get it wrong. Sand the sides of the ring and apply just a little bit of super glue to one side of the barrel trigger. I'm assembling it on the leftover piece of acrylic here and I don't want it to get glued to it. Once the glue has dried on one side, you can apply glue to the other side. Make sure the glue gets worked right into the crack. It's kind of like a little monster eating something. Um, yummy glue. Anyways, now we have a barrel trigger. Before we assemble the barrel, we want to paint the end of the mini barrel silver so we don't get any paint on our acrylic tube. So mask off a 10 millimeter wide section on the not beveled end of the mini barrel and paint that part silver. And you might as well paint the barrel trigger while you have your silver paint out. Once the paint is dry, you can assemble the mini barrel, the acrylic tube, and the barrel trigger. Mask off just below where the barrel trigger will go so you don't get any glue on your nice clear acrylic. Apply some super glue just a little bit above that tape and slide the barrel trigger down into place. Remove the tape right away just to make sure the glue doesn't stick to it as well. Okay, now let's make a way to attach the proton gun to the pack. So trace the V-hook template on a piece of quarter inch plywood and cut it out. Make sure to file or sand the edges for smoothness. Cut a 55 millimeter piece of one inch conduit and cut a slit down one side. Heat it up until it gets pliable and press the V-hook template in the middle of it to hold it down flat. Then start heating and working the edges up around the template. This isn't that easy to do and it involves a lot of struggling. So if you're struggling, you're doing things right, I guess. Now is probably also a good time to remind you that overheating PVC causes deadly fumes, so do it outside with a respirator. And don't overheat it. Okay, once you've got the basic vibe of the thing, mark some lines about 10 to 12 millimeters in from the angled edges and cut away the excess PVC. Now you can go back to your heat gun, reheat the edges one at a time, and do an even better job of forming them around the V-hook template. Sorry for uh, getting in the way of the camera. I was kind of struggling. However, the end result was pretty great. File the top and bottom nice and flat, and round the sharp edges of the plywood a little bit to help it not stick in the slot. It should be able to slide in and out without too much effort. Cut piece 104, the V-hook center, from quarter inch plywood, and use wood glue and a clamp to glue it in the center of the V-hook template, and let it dry. 
Cut piece 105, the V-hook base from quarter inch plywood. Put the V-hook template on top and mark the angle you want it to sit at when it's on the pack. Drill and countersink a hole in the approximate center of the V-hook base. Screw the glued template on and adjust it to the right angle. Cut a second piece 105, which is going to go inside the pack to support the weight of the proton gun. But before we do that, let's install the V-hook. Cut piece 89, gun track A from quarter inch plywood, and piece 90, gun track B from 6mm foam. Glue the foam to the plywood, and the plywood to the bottom of the Neutrona wand. The V-hook is installed with the wider end facing the barrel. When you drill your holes, make sure they're countersunk really well. If the screw head sticks out past the level of the plastic, it's going to catch on the other piece when you try and put your gun away after a big ghost fighting incident. And that'll look awkward on the news. Okay, grab your second piece 105 and screw a screw right in the middle of it to act like a handle. We're going to be inserting this in the upper corner of the crank generator box. We'll make one cut for the piece of wood to slide in and another cut down the center so the screw can slot in there as well. Now jam your piece of wood in through that slot system. Of course, you wouldn't have to do this if you planned ahead and actually glued the piece of wood in while you were making the proton pack, which I didn't. Once it's in, you can lift up the flap, get as much glue in there as possible, and pull it up tight against the side until the glue cools. Then glue your original cut shut, and done, like a nice neat surgery. Unscrew your handle screw, and drill a couple small holes through the V-hook mount into the base that you just installed. Drill the holes in the mount wider so the screw threads won't catch on them as they're going through. Again, make sure you countersink the holes well for not catching on things ability, and screw it down to the proton pack. Paint it black, and give it a little bit of silver action with your finger. Okay, before you paint the wand, you want to make sure you know what you're doing with all your knobs and lights. So whittle the stick on the front knob to a nice point, and drill a hole the diameter of the stick into the gun body. Next make some protective dots with a punch and some tape. Put these dots wherever your lights are going to go, and that'll protect that area from paint so when you glue the lights on, the glue will do the best job it can. Also, depending on your lights, you might want to cut through the top layer of 2mm foam to create a depression for them to sit in. I decided to do that for my two top lights. I didn't bother with tape circles for the lights in the depressions because it's pretty easy not to paint in there. And now, we can paint it black. I recommend giving three good coats of artist's acrylic paints. It's important for giving a good base layer for when you're doing the silver accents at the end. You'll also notice I've removed the V-hook to paint it silver separately. Once your three coats of paint are dry, remove all your stickers and glue down your knobs and lights. And don't forget to add the nuts to any of your switches. Okay, now before you install the clear acrylic tube section, you want to make a little stop so that when it's retracted, the barrel trigger isn't right up against the mini barrel. So make a mark as far back as you want it to go, drill a tiny little hole, and screw in a little screw that's at least a bit longer than the thickness of the PVC. Now you can install that barrel contraption just by pushing it in. I didn't use any glue because the fit was nice and tight and I might want to adjust something later. Cut out the decals from the same sheet I used for the Proton Pack build. You can find those at hprops.com. Thanks, hprops. Tape over the decals with nice clear tape. Cut them out with a nice sharp knife. Stick them down with some nice tacky tack. Spray the backs with some nice sticky spray. And stick them on your Neutrona wand with a nice steady hand. Once the decals are on, grab your super secret silver paint mix. It may be a 50-50 ratio of these two paints, or it may not, but really it is. Put a little bit on some cardboard, and even littler on your finger, and lightly rub it on to the proton gun. The goal is to make it look like the black paint has worn off from use, and we're seeing the silver metal underneath. So therefore, places that would get the most wear should be the most silver. Painting like this is pretty much an art form in itself, and I have just a small understanding of what it takes to do a really good job. The one thing I do know is just take it slow and have patience. Slowly build up that silver until it feels good. Alright, there's just a few more little parts to make, so let's get on that. Find a piece of flexible wire about 3 millimeters in diameter and paint it red. Cut two little blocks of wood that are 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters by 17 millimeters. Sand them nice and smooth, bevel both ends with a file or sandpaper, and drill a hole in one end that your red wire will fit into. Line up the top of one of the wooden blocks with the top of the barrel trigger, and make a mark in line with the center of it. Very carefully drill a small hole on that mark. Drill a hole through the second piece as well, but it can be a little bit farther down. Grab some brass or copper paint and paint up the blocks. 
Then unpaint the blocks where you're going to be gluing and glue the blocks in place, one on the barrel trigger and one on the barrel tab. Extend the hole into the barrel trigger and screw in a little screw. Just be cautious that the screw doesn't split the two halves of the barrel trigger. Now you can screw another small screw into the barrel tab and glue the red wire between the two blocks. Attach the V-hook to the bottom, add some screws to the clippered valve for extra detail, and three on each side of the bottom going into the gun body. I'm using the type of screws you'd use with a Craig jig, because they have that nice cylindrical head profile. Drill a couple small holes on each side of the handle, cut a four foot long section of three quarter inch split wire loom, or not split if you can find it. Feed it a little ways into the handle, and screw some screws through the holes you made to keep it in place. Of course you'll also want to cut a hole for the hose in the pack, and you can jam the other end of your hose in there. And that's it, you're done. Now get out there and bust some ghosts. Just don't cross the streams. All right, project is finished, and I'm super happy with how it turned out. Not only does it look really good, it's also really light, which I didn't realize when I was making this, but there's a lot of cosplayers who have packs that are really quite heavy, which then is hard on their backs and hard to keep on for a long time. So if you're wondering how much this weighs, the wand weighs 660 grams or about one and a half pounds and the wand and the pack together weigh 3.6 kilos or around eight pounds. I'm not sure what the pack weighs separately from the wand, but I'm sure Matt could tell you. And of course there's more you could do with this. You could wire the lights so they actually work. I was kind of running out of time so I didn't do that. Plus I don't really know how that well, so, but you could do it. All right, I think that's it. There'll be a link to the pattern somewhere up here and in the description. Thanks for watching. See ya.